And so I've got some updates to go over. Um, I was just looking through the um, I was just looking through the pull request queue, which is the list of all of the bug fixes and improvements and new features that have been added. And just looking through Search Kit, just scrolling down, it is a pretty long, impressive list of things that have been added to or improved. This is just the search for Search Kit um, in the past couple of months. So there's a lot that's been done. It's this list is mostly bug fixes, but there have been some cool new features that I want to talk about. Um, and similar search for Afform um, also turns up quite a bit of stuff that's been done recently. Um, and so thanks to everybody that's contributed to that. Um, it's been great to uh, it's been great to review other people's PRs and take a look at. Um, what other people are wanting to enhance, and I've been uh, responding to bug re reports too, and I do appreciate those as well, as, as frustrating as they are sometimes, um, just looking through um, it. There's been some really good ones, and just want to appreciate some people who have uh, taken the time to really, you know, add the screenshots and the detailed steps to reproduce, and that's helped us squash those bugs really quickly um, and get the product even more stable. So, um, I do want to say that I'm happy to field any questions in this conversation. So there's a chat window on the right side that you can open up by hitting the little chat icon. And um, I'm keeping an eye on that as well as um, trying not to go over time. So uh, I'll say things and hopefully you'll say things too if you have a, a question to put in the chat and I might, or you can turn off your microphone and ask it if there's a pause. Um, and we'll uh, we'll go through some stuff that's some stuff that's uh, brand new in 2023 or might be new to you if you're just upgrading because um, it went in over the past few months um, uh, and a couple of couple of oldies but goodies um, just want to uh, just want to give a quick overview search kit and app form also known as form builder until we think of a better name I guess uh, allows you to um, search and display just about anything in Civi Serum and also create um, forms to uh, either either uh, enhance those searches to give like inputs input fields to the searches or forms to uh, input data and allow users to input data into Civi Serum for you. So let's look at uh, let's look at some new stuff. So we had a sprint in England a few months ago um, that I thought went really well, um, and there was a lot of contributions out that to um, something new called the admin UI extension. Um, and this is an extension that you can turn on right now. Um, it is shipped with Civi CRM. Um, so if you if you turn it on, just go into admin. Um, you know, system settings extensions, and just turn on the admin UI extension. And what that's going to do is this going to give you a whole bunch of package searches. You can see here, if we look by package, um, the uh, a lot of these searches are the result of the admin UI extension. And the idea with this extension is to start to ease us into actually using Civi CRM, um, actually using SearchKit to replace parts of Civi CRM. For now, it's optional, um, but We'll talk about uh, talk about the roadmap for that in a minute, um, but I would encourage you to go ahead and turn this on just because the more people we get giving feedback, um, the better, and it'll give you a little taste of the future. And also, um, I don't think it's going to have a big impact on users right now um, because it replaces screens such as custom, uh, you know, administer custom fields, um, and you know, probably. Creating custom fields is not something that you do every day. Uh, if it is, I might suggest that maybe you're doing something wrong with Civi CRM. Um, so, uh, but so this screen now is generated by SearchKit via the admin UI extension, um, and so it looks very similar to what you would have seen in the past um, without the extension. If you turn the extension off, look at it side by side, pretty similar. But the neat thing now is that because this is generated with SearchKit embedded in Afform, you can tweak it as much as you want for a specific site or for a set of sites. You could export your tweaks and 
packages them up for a set of sites. And that gives an enormous amount of flexibility. And the fact that you can do that with this screen, think about the possibilities for other screens in Civi CRM. Uh, you, can, you can now replace, um, for example, the tabs uh, when you're looking at a contact. So any contact in the database, uh, if you look at these tabs that exist um, listing their activities, for example. So just had a question come up uh, just last week about how to replace this. And it's very possible. You can just create a search for activities that does the same thing as this. And probably that's where we're going. Probably we're going to be just replacing this tab with search kit in the future so that anybody can customize it. Um, just to demo that. So uh, as I said, the Civi Serum admin UI packages these searches. So let's find that one that was for custom fields. Um, the root of that was actually custom field groups. And if you click on a particular field, you'll get to the custom fields. So let's just look at the custom field groups search. Here's the table display um, that is what generated the output for this. And say that we, for example, just didn't feel like showing the ID. So I just click the X to not show it um, and hit save. And now if I refresh, um, refresh the page, no more ID. So this gives you a, hopefully a small flavor of the possibilities for how flexible Civi Serum is going toward. Um, how flexible the configuration of these screens, every screen in Civi CRM, um, that's sort of the vision is that search kit will be used to replace these screens uh, piecemeal and eventually wholesale. Uh, meanwhile, uh, next item I want to talk about is search kit reports. This is an extension um, that's been developed uh, to help to ease the transition between search kit and Civi report. Let me see if I have it installed on my, um, I don't think I do have it installed on my demo site. Um, let's find this. So check out those, there's blog posts about this. Um, this one from December um, with a link to the extension. Uh, you can uh, watch a short demo of it. So I won't recreate all of that here, um, but just uh, to note, uh, you know, shout out to Ollie Gibson who helped to develop that um, and check out the extension. It basically does the same thing um, this is the same concept of giving you a bunch of package searches, um, but they don't replace anything. They're just there. So if you install the extension, you just get a bunch of package searches, which do essentially the same thing as a lot of the Savory reports do. And then you can open them up, use them, tweak them, save them, um, put them into a form um, to use on your site somewhere. So hopefully that's useful. Let us know if it is, and um, we'll keep on working on that direction as well, um, because there is a lot of overlap between search kit and savory report, which has generated some questions. Which one should I use? I think the speedy answer is use whichever one works right now. If there's a really complex report you have that would be difficult or impossible to recreate in search kit, just use the report. But I think a lot of times search kit can do it. It's developed massively in the past couple of years um, and can do a whole lot. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that it can do in just one second. Uh, just did want to give a shout out to the configurable actions uh, improvement that's gone in. This is a smaller improvement, but it's neat to be able to, uh, it's, it's been requested by a few people. So if you create a search um, with a uh, 
table display, this, <clears throat> this action menu um, right here, which will give it you actions right here. Um, some people have said that this list is too comprehensive or don't, don't apply to all users or all searches. So now you can just quickly turn some of those off if you don't like them right here. Um, turn a bunch of actions off. And now we've only got five enabled. Refresh that. And we've only got those five. So little improvements like that that just make search kit more usable, more powerful, more flexible are going in all the time. I just wanted to highlight that is because it's the most recent. Now, next thing on the list is data segments. Strictly speaking, this is not brand new in 2023, but it is. Um, it might be new to you. So I want to talk about it because um, this is something that I realized to my dismay is not actually in the search kit documentation. Whoops. So if anybody um, feels like taking notes on this and can uh, dump those into the documentation or you know draft something up, man, that would be helpful um, because a lot of people don't even know this feature exists, even though there's a tab for it right there. Um, what does it do? Let me just go over it real quick. Let's go into the data segmentation tab. From a high level, what a data segment is, is it allows you to put things into categories. So let's say that we want to put our contacts into age brackets. So we're gonna do this for contacts. Um, I'm going to say babies are under two, kids are under 12, teens are under 20, and then the default would be adults. Um, notice that, notice that I didn't, um, bother to add greater than conditions here because the order should catch it. Um, so the order of um, the fact that babies comes first in this list means that that's going to be the first condition to be evaluated. If you're under two, you're a baby, skip all the rest. <clears throat> Don't need any conditions for adults because um, the rest has already been conditioned. So what does that actually do? Well, it actually creates a new field for contacts that you can then search on, filter on, sort by, or group by. So if we create a search for contacts, we can see their age and their age bracket that we've just created. All right. So we can see this person is 12. They got categorized as a teen. Just about everybody else. Oh, this person's five. They got categorized as a kid. Because I added a default, it actually will default to adult if it doesn't exist. Um, if I didn't want it to do that, if I just wanted it to be blank for people with no age, instead of default, I would have given it a condition like age is over 20. So, so that's cool that you've just created a new field, um, but what's the point of all that? Well, let's do something that uh, some people call a pivot table. So let's group by age bracket. <coughs> this doesn't make sense, although we could do, um, say the average um, okay 
we've just found out that we have six kids in the database with an average age of 6.3 years old, uh, six teens with an average age of 14 years old, and 154 adults, average age of 50. Kind of neat that we could do that so quickly and so easily. So that's the power of um, that's the power of data segments in SearchKit, and I hope that sort of um, sparks your imagination for how you might use it. Uh, there's a lot of different use possibilities for it. You could group your donors into categories, um, you know, of uh, how much they give, uh, whether they're a, a large donor, medium, small, <coughs> etc. Um, you could group. Uh, you could group contributions by like a category of contribution type, because maybe your organization has hundreds of contribution types, but a lot of them are similar. And so you would want to group them in a category and you'd say, you know, uh, you know, charitable giving contributions are any of these five types. And you can do that with a, with a segment. All right, the comment section is open. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but I'm going to keep going through um, all of this stuff. So all of these improvements and vision for SearchKit has culminated in SearchKit being required now in core. So in 2023, if you download a copy of Civi CRM or if you upgrade your copy of Civi CRM to the latest version, SearchKit will be on all the time. And the nice thing about that is that you can now rely on it existing on any site. People who write extensions that rely on SearchKit can just use it. And we, as core developers, can start doing what I was talking about a little while ago of taking core parts of Civi CRM and making them, building them on top of SearchKit. So the contact summary tab, we could now say, we just want to replace some of that stuff with SearchKit wholesale so that you get that power and benefit of being able to drag stuff around, add, remove fields, et cetera. Case in point, there's a new feature um, called autocompletes. This is not a new concept in Civi CRM. Anytime that you need to type into a field and search for something, Civi CRM typically gives you an autocomplete. In the past, these might have been called, these were known to developers as entity reference fields. Um, so like searching for a contribution page, start typing a few letters and you, you know, pull up the one that you're looking for, or most commonly searching for a contact, type a few letters of their first or last name or email address and find that contact. These have been rewritten for 2023 using API 4 and search kit. And let me just, talk a little bit about how cool this is and how powerful it can be. Um, so let's do a quick demo here. Um, let's create a form. And allow you to pick an existing contact for this contact on the form. Okay, now this field is an autocomplete field. And it says instead of just having to enter a, a first and last name for a new contact on the form, you could pick somebody who's already in the database. But what if I don't want to expose every single contact in the database to this form? Maybe this form is public facing, or maybe it's just used by a segment of the staff like volunteers or interns. What I can do then is I can create a, I can do this right here, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's clear some of this stuff out. Okay. Let's say that I only want to show contacts um, Um, who have, you know, the, uh, 
major donor tag, for example. All right. All right, so there's our 44 major donors. Search makes sense. What am I gonna do with that? There's a new type of display, which you probably haven't seen yet. Um, in addition to being able to create a table, a list or a grid, which are typical um, user facing displays. <coughs> Excuse me, getting over a cold. <clears throat> typical user facing displays. The autocomplete has a very specific purpose which is that it allows you to customize this widget right here. So this drop down, select a contact, we can now say the search criteria that we um, set are going to limit that autocomplete. Only those 44 contacts are ever gonna show up in that list. Additionally, any uh, in addition to any new contacts that are created with that tag, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now that is probably okay. I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna save this. And you would see um, when we're in form builder, a form that allows you to update a particular major donor. Let's say I'm check these questions. But we're trying to record this. Okay. So we got that existing contact field. And we're going to now pick a save search for it and say that this save search is going to influence the field. Okay. Right. Major donors. Um, and we could then actually say we're going to open the access. Um, and this is something you would do if you're sure that, <clears throat> that this form isn't going to be exposed to anybody that you don't trust with that list of contacts. It's sort of an alternative to Civi Serum's ACLs, which are more complex to set up and more global. This is just on a per form basis, allows you to open access, limited only to the search display. If you've ever customized a, a custom contact reference field, a similar concept there, you can limit it to a particular group. Okay. But we can do one further thing, which is that we can create an autocomplete display and say exactly how we want the results of the autocomplete to be sorted and exactly how we want them to show up. We could say <coughs> um, we've got the display name, which is going to be the title. We could actually do some of the things you can do with search kit display. We could rewrite it. So we could say display name and also like their contact ID um, or display name and email or whatever. And then we can add additional description, description lines below that to say how the field should show up. We can preview this and see <coughs> exactly who shows up in that list. And you can see the rewrite had the intended effect. Um, let's just add um, because it would be useful. Um, primary email and city. Once we add those as columns, we can add them to the autocomplete display. Email and city. Let's preview it now. Okay, and we can see we've got our autocomplete results for contacts includes the name, the rewritten name with contact ID that we put at the top, which is a little silly. I don't recommend it. This is just an example. Um, their email address and their city.
So this is something you can do on any uh, form builder form now, is every autocomplete on the form can be configured with one of these displays. Hopefully you don't have to create a new save search and display every time. You can create a few that you like and reuse them on these forms. I'm just reading a question here. Uh, Roshani asks, can this be used for allowing monthly recurring donors to update their contact information and their monthly donation amount? Um, this would also need integration with Stripe. Um, so Form Builder doesn't yet integrate with Stripe. Uh, it would be great to get that going. That's something that we talked about at the last sprint. It's def there's, definitely, uh, there's definitely a lot of desire behind that. Okay, so continuing on the trend, as you can see, there's a lot of overlap between what SearchKit and Afform do, um, not in terms of their functionality, but in terms of how they complement each other. SearchKit makes things that can be displayed on Afforms or can help configure things that are on Afforms. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Afforms can, um, can contain SearchKit displays and uh, place them. In, uh, in various places in CBCRM, including the contact summary screen um, or the dashboard. So let's talk about Afform behaviors. This is sort of a developer -y concept, but I wanted to throw it out to you developers out there and also give a demonstration of what it can do for the end users who are um, listening. Um, an example would be uh, autofill and duplicate checking. So an Afform behavior is sort of, um, to back up for a second, Afform, I think, has not developed as rapidly as SearchKit in part because it's so open-ended. Um, it's a, it doesn't have the specificity of a lot of CIVI Serum forms like <clears throat> the contribution form, the event registration form. Those are very, those do basically one thing, whereas Afform is designed to do everything. And so it's taken a little bit of a time to get the everything into it, but we're working on it. And one way that we're working towards that is this new concept of Afform behaviors. So let's look back at our form here. So two new things you'll see on this form. Actually, one of them has been here for a while, but it's been rewritten to now <clears throat> behave differently. So autofill. This is new, actually. It used to be just you could autofill a contact from the current user, which is probably the most useful thing. But now you could also autofill a contact based on a relationship to another contact, including um, the relationship to the current user or a relationship to another contact on the form. Very useful. I encourage you to play with it. And that is done via a behavior. Another thing that's done via behavior is duplicate matching. So if a if you especially open up a form to the public and people can just enter their name and email address, but they're not logged in, CVCRM doesn't know who they are, but it can take a pretty educated guess based on their email address, based on their name, or any other criteria that you've set up in your dedupe matching rules. If you haven't set those up in your database, I encourage you to check those um, because it can be very helpful in um, keeping your, duplicate, your duplicates down. So find and merge duplicate contacts check your deduping rules and any new deduping rules you add, um, such as one that takes in, you know, location into account or phone number into account, anything you want to match on, um, will show up in this list as available uh, dedupe matching rules. <coughs> That's also implemented as a behavior. And the idea is these behaviors are pretty flexible. Um, I think I've written some docs for it. Uh, we'll try to find those. But if you're interested in having Form Builder be able to do new things or support new entities, um, currently you can create a form that lets you do all of this stuff. Grant, activity, event, household, uh, individual, membership, organization, participant, relationship, sample. Hmm. I forgot that was there, but that's a good segue um, to another thing on the list. Let's just finish this one first. So, um, so play with this. 
play with these new features. And if you would like to help push forward the development of other, um, other things that the form can do, for example, uh, basically anything that happens in the pre or post processing of an entity would be a behavior and can be configurable right here when you're selecting an entity. So for example, um, you know, when you create an activity, should the assignee be receive a notification email, that would be a great use case for a behavior. I believe I did put, um, yeah, duplicate. So autofill, duplicate checking, and also relationships. So not only can you, um, <coughs> not only can you find a contact based on their relationships, but you can also create relationships for contacts. So if I add a, uh, say an organization to this form, so you can add your individual and organization, uh, let's just also create a relationship between them with contact A being the individual, contact B being the organization, and the relationship type being employee. That's how that works. Um, so that would save the relationship when the form is saved, saving the individual as the employee of the organization. But uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to autofill them um, prior to that, that would be here. Autofill as the employer of individual one. So that would work well if you had uh, individual one set up to autofill as the current user. That would, for a logged in user or a user that was following a checksum, like uh, an email token that leads them straight to this form, then it's all filled out for them. The current user is contact one, the organization is already autofilled as their employer. <laughs> nice and simple. Uh, ReCAPTCHA is also now available for Form Builder to help uh, cut out the spam that we uh, received when we were signing up for this event. Um, also want to give a shout out to Eileen for the Civi import extension, um, which makes heavy use of uh, which makes heavy use of search kit and form builder. I recommend you go and check out that extension. Um, it allows you uh, in the past when you import records from a spreadsheet, um, Civi Serum would spit out a, a spreadsheet back at you um, that you could like download and look at with, um, you know, with uh, Excel or something to for any uh, mismatches or any errors in the data or anything that it couldn't import. Now use a search kit for that. So instead of having to download a spreadsheet and slog your way through that, um, you can actually uh, you can actually just go to a screen that will give you a table that's generated with search kit for all of the import problems and buttons right there to fix them and resubmit the import. <clears throat> Finally, I think we've built up the suspense long enough for what this sample is. So that is that is a new entity that I created out of thin air from a extension called ECK. And I want to give a special shout out to this extension just because it's so heavily leveraging search kit and form builder. Um, so you know that you can create custom fields in Civi Serum. Now you can create custom entities if you add this extension. So what is this screen and why does it look so familiar? Yep, it's a search kit table um, automatically created by the, uh, by the extension when I added a new entity type called a sample, uh, which is a really creative title for a sample of an entity. So you can add a new one.
if you wanted to have more than just a title, of course, you would add custom fields to it. <clears throat> Some good use cases for Entity Construction Kit would be anything that you want to store in Civi Serum that doesn't already have a place to store it. So if it's not an activity or a case or a contribution or an event, et cetera, um, and you want to create a new thing in Civi Serum, um, you know, whether it's pets or resources or, um, you know, anything that your organization needs to keep track of, um, you can create them with this. Let's take a look at uh, the questions here. Will the autocomplete search be based on the rewritten title or just the display name column? It will be based on everything that's in that rewrite. So yes, it would be based on the everything that you've put into the rewritten column, uh, any of the tokens that you put in. Um, Aiden, thanks for that link. Uh, everybody check your check the comments tab of this uh, call for a link to um, the admin UI extension. Put that up on the screen. A lot of good progress, a lot of pro good progress has been made. Um, there's a few things left for the admin. I mean, we've basically covered almost everything in the admin area of Civi Serum. So if you turn on that extension, you will see very familiar looking search kit tables, replacing the hopefully soon to be forgotten older tables. Janek is asking, are custom entities available through the API? Yes, they have to be in order to work with search kit and form builder. So once you create a um, once you create a new entity with Entity Construction Kit, it gets its own API um, that you can see in the API Explorer. You can see it in um, you know available for searching on Search Kit and uh, and for creating in Entity Construction Kit in sorry in Form Builder. All right, I'm happy to take any further questions. I've, I've gone down my list of um, just charging through what's new in Search Kit and Form Builder. Hopefully this gives you some inspiration for how to take it home and use it, or if you're a developer, uh, try to break it. Thanks for shining. If anybody has any uh, questions or comments, you can just pipe up now and turn on your uh, turn on your microphone. Happy to hear from you. Uh, Jeff is asking, is somebody working on documentation for Form Builder? Uh, it's being added too slowly. I think it might be more than minimal at this point. Let's let's see what it looks like. So this is the search kit documentation, which is getting better. Um, still can use definitely a section on uh, data segments at least. So that's the searching and reporting section. Where even is Form Builder? Does anybody remember? Under the admin uh, custom communications, I think. Okay, customizing the user interface, right? Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. Should have looked there. Okay. So this is our form builder documentation.
definitely needs more. Um, and I would also encourage you, if you're not already on the um, the search kit or form builder channels of our uh, chat, people are more than welcome to join us. That's where you'll get the quickest response to any questions you have or um, the quickest engagement to any suggestions. Um, most of us who are using CiviCRM all the time are on that chat room all the time, chat.civicrm.org. Um, and, uh, and on that chat, you'll also see at the pin to the top, a link to the monthly uh, meeting that we have. So in addition to infrequent webinars that I do um, to keep people up to date, we also have a monthly meeting, um, which is mostly, to, mostly aimed towards uh, planning and development of new features. But anybody is invited to join that. Oh, um, yeah, Jens, thanks for thanks for reminding me. So um, that uh, that cool autocomplete that I showed you is now also available as a custom field. Um, so. And so this has been a long requested feature in Civi CRM, um, which is that uh, here we are in our shiny new search kit UI for administering custom fields. Um, if you want to, so for a long time, you've been able to add a contact reference field. And that is, um, that's been around for a long time. It's uh, sort of loosely tied in with API 3, so you can add some API 3 params to filter it. Um, now there's a new thing. Uh, this is also brand new in 2023, um, entity reference fields. And an entity is a thing in Civi CRM, as Eileen so eloquently put in the docs yesterday, uh, which could be anything at all that's exposed to search kit. I mean, this is a very long list of things that you can autocomplete. And when you do autocomplete one of these, um, you know, including custom fields, which is very meta. You could have a custom field that references a custom field. I don't know why you would do that, I, I, but anyway. Um, so, so in addition to contacts, you can reference anything. So like events, you can have a custom field that references an event, why not? Um, and when you put that custom field on a form, you get the same power as you do um, with those uh, the other fields that I demoed for you the fields that do uh, existing contact or an existing entity, um, these entity reference fields, you can also configure them the same way using a search kit, uh, search to filter them, um, and an optional to display to tweak how they look and how the output looks. The default output is usually pretty good. Um, you know, it's gonna display the title of something or the display name of something, um, the ID and any description that's, uh, that exists for that entity. But if you wanna tweak it, go right ahead. Why not? I'll just uh, save this and then we can event should be able to preview it now. Yep, there's our events. So now um, any entity, any entity that can have a custom field can have a custom field that references any other entity. It allows you to create a lot of different links in the database from one thing to another, um, which are hopefully going to be useful, then you can use them in search kit and just, you know, <clears throat> and pull in those links for your um, reports. Um, Noah, in view mode, the field is just going to show whatever that top line shows. So it's shows fall fundraiser dinner, you know, if you pick that. Uh, and if you customize the display, again, it'll show up as whatever the top line is customized to show up as. Um, Bruce asked if conditional fields are on the radar for Form Builder. They are. In fact, there's been a lot of work done on that already. Um, it's in the review and merging process. Jeff reminds us the next meeting will be next Thursday. That's right. 
Um, and Rashad, yes, these extensions do work on Drupal and WordPress. All of these are native Civi Serum extensions, so it doesn't matter what platform you're using. Jeff is looking forward to when contribution and payment support is available. So am I. That's going to be um, that's going to be really great, and it's something that we've been discussing for a while. Getting there. We're getting there. Jeff, you'll want to definitely want to use these tools in your new site. Um, it's it's the way that Civi Serum, it's the direction the Civi Serum is heading. Um, so any any custom screens that you need to make, check out Search Kit first for presenting customized tables of anything you want, um, or lists and grids and other stuff that Search Kit can display. Any more questions, thoughts, comments? Uh, Luciano is asking about making them uh, more user friendly and simpler. Yes, there's been a lot of discussion about that. Um, and I'm sure it's going to come up again in our monthly call on Thursday. Um, there has um, <coughs> there's been some work done um, to create uh, there's there's been some discussion and mockups of how to uh, streamline and improve the UI in um, Form Builder, which we've been uh, which we discussed at last month's call, and we'll be uh, hopefully finalizing. The plans to move forward on that in uh, next week's call. Uh, so, if you want to see those, see how those uh, new designs are shaping up, uh, feel free to stop in on that call, um, or just be surprised when it comes out. And uh, there has been there's been quite a bit of discussion about how to make Search Kit um, easier to use for end users. Um, ways to make the UI more simplified or streamlined without losing the features. Um, it's still an ongoing discussion, but uh, definitely it's being talked about. I was going to say, I think it's, you know, it's really encouraging to see the, the amount of progress that we've got on this. And it, it really is kind of changing the, the course of Civi. Um, it's, yeah, exciting to see. Thanks, Aiden, and thanks for helping to push. Aiden's been um, really, really trying to help push forward the admin UI, and it's gotten a little bit stymied on the custom field options um, bit that got so bogged down in the complexity. Um, but I think we're almost there with that, and then we can see the light of day with that extension. Uh, I just want to echo, I mean, we're, we're basically designing stuff now where staff don't have to go into the city back end at all, which is a huge uh, game changer just because a lot of people were just like a little overwhelmed back there. Now we just give them what they need right in front of them and they can get their work done really fast. And mm -hmm. the improvements over the last six months have made it um, just really, really easy to do that. So wonderful. Great job. Thank you. I should also point that out that at that at that sprint in England a few months ago, there was a lot of um, search kit documentation written, um, uh, and also there was a sprint uh, in the Netherlands before that in which a lot of um, use cases uh, or examples were written that you can see in the docs. So, um, you know, back in the uh, in the search kit docs here, all these examples, um, you know, creating a soft kit search and display, creating up an upcoming events form, step-by-step um, -step examples. And if you want to add more of those, um, this is an example of how to use a grid to show your public membership display. Um, cool stuff, cool examples of, um, of use cases. Of course, there's a million use cases, so 
um, this, this just scratches the surface. But, um, you know, feel free to add more of these. If you have a cool use for SearchKit and you can write it up uh, with a few screenshots, you can add it to the docs.